Over the years, we've done many types of builds. I always want to highlight different aspects of the hobbies, from plants to reptiles to amphibians to aquatic environments and even small critters. There's beauty and fun in all of it, so I think it's important to show what's out there. One of those tiny critters has appeared in many builds, but till now, we've never done a dedicated setup for them. They go by many names, the isopod, potato bug, wood louse, or as we called them growing up, the pill bug. What do you like to refer to them as? Let me know down in the comments. These humble creatures happily eat decaying organics and clean up after other animals. That's one of the reasons they're such a great inclusion for bioactive enclosures. You'll find them around the globe in a variety of environments. One of those areas that would make for an incredible design is under an uprooted tree. There's always something bittersweet about seeing a forest giant at its end. It's sad because you know how long it took the tree to grow that large, but it's cool to see how nature takes over and the tree lives a completely new life. It's something that always captivates me when you see it, and you can be sure that there are plenty of isopods living there. I think it's time to finally bring that type of look into the animal room and use it to showcase a colony of isopods. This all begins with a small shelf right above my nano aquariums. I've pictured a tank here ever since I built the rack, so I'm really excited to finally make that happen. As usual, I'll build the enclosure from scratch. I cut down a few pieces of glass, buffed out the edges with sandpaper, and washed away the debris. Then I taped everything off, applied the silicone, and assembled the tank. This one is different in that I secured glass to the top. I used this and the bottom area to attach glass tracks with silicone. I clamped them in place while the silicone cured. This left me with the shell of the tank. You'll notice here though that there's a little bit of a gap between the pieces on the top. I did this to account for ventilation. I'll fill the space with expanded PVC board and window screen. I secured the screen to a few strips of board with hot glue. I added another piece on top to sandwich it in between. Then I applied silicone to the underside of this and pressed it into the top of the tank. I taped it down and left it to sit overnight. I still have to make doors for the front, but I'll do that after I make the scape. On a side note though, you may be wondering why I put a mirror on the back. As you might expect, I built this completely out of scrap materials, and this is the only piece that I had big enough to fit the back, so I used it. Anyway, as I said earlier, I want this scape to look like the bottom of a fallen tree. A huge part of that is obviously the roots, so I went and selected a few branches that I think will allow me to pull off that look quite well. I'll also include some cork bark flats to build up the background. With the tank constructed and the material selected, I went on to get a sense of how the pieces could fit together. I want to have the roots branch out from the center of the tank, with bark on either side. I decided to go a different route with this enclosure. I used the Wabi Kusa mix I showed a few videos back. In case you missed that one, it's a mix of aqua soil, cocoa fiber, and clay cat litter. Yes, you heard that right, cat litter. As I explained in that one, natural clay cat litter is made from bentonite clay. You could buy bentonite as bentonite, but this is an easy, cost-effective option. Just make sure to get one that's only made from clay with no additives. Look on the back of the package if you're unsure. Anyway, you can mix this with other components to create a pretty decent background. I went with three parts aqua soil, one part clay cat litter, and one part cocoa fiber. I think it's easiest to hydrate the components individually and then combine them together. I began with the aqua soil. I combined it with water and kneaded it together until it became the consistency of dough. I don't know the exact ratio, but I'd recommend starting with a little and add more as needed. I did the same for the clay. From there I pressed the aqua soil out into a thin layer. I crumbled the clay evenly over it. Then I poured on the cocoa fiber and mixed everything together. It wound up being quite stable and hold up well when molded together. The con with this type of background though is that you can't let it dry out. Otherwise it will crack and fall off the enclosure. If you keep up with watering and maintain humidity, that shouldn't be an issue. The cool thing about it is that it can act like an adhesive of sorts. You can put it on the cork bark first, as I did with this piece, or add it to the glass and then press in the bark. After that, just go back and fill in some of the excess spots. This actually holds everything in place quite well. As I set this tank up, I worked in the two pieces of driftwood. 
these two can be locked in with the mix. I continued adding pieces and filling in the space with more clay as I went. As you may have noticed though, there's stuff smeared all over the glass, so I went back and wiped off the excess. This all resulted in a pretty neat and natural looking setup. It looks a little bit basic as is though. Let's go back and add some details. I have an array of small branches here that will add more detail and texture. It's typically little things like this that bring the look full circle, and adding these to the design was quite simple. I just poked them into the background. In other areas, I added more mud. You figure, in nature, a good bit of dirt is left over on the roots in a similar way. The addition of this and the roots really made things more appealing. Let's move down to the false bottom. For this one, I decided to go with the sand false bottom because the area I'm working with is fairly shallow. I selected fine black sand to keep it less prominent. I built up around a half an inch or so on the bottom. I'll also include activated charcoal to help promote the health of the environment. I sprinkled this over top of the sand. As for the substrate, I'll mix up organic topsoil, tree fern fibers, orchid bark, sphagna moss, and coarse sand. I mixed up all of these components in the ratios shown on screen. The result is something similar to my regular mix. It will retain moisture while being able to drain well. That said, using something like topsoil is a little more favorable for the isopods. I went on to add a decent layer throughout. As usual, I sloped it up toward the back to create a greater sense of depth. At this point, it's looking pretty good and is finally ready for the plants. I won't go too crazy with this one. I've selected Photonia Stripes Forever, Cryptanthus Nubicula, Ficus Pumula Quercifolia, Hypnomoss, and Haircap Moss. As always, I'll start with the largest plant, the Photonia. I added a single bunch in the back to act like a showcase plant of sorts. From there, I filled in some of the open spaces with the crypts. I really like the primordial cryptic look of these. I think they blend perfectly with the roots and everything else. Before I add the other plants, I'll include the leaf litter. I have some oak leaves here which will cover the entire bottom of the enclosure. These will add a neat and natural look, but they're also beneficial to the isopods. They'll create places of refuge and provide a supplementary food source. As they break down the leaves, they'll be converted into nutrients for the plants, which is part of the bioactive process. I added these prior to the other plants to make things a little easier. Now for that glorious green stuff, the moss. I added patches of it throughout on the ground and background areas. After that, I added some ficus throughout to add pops of texture and interest. I'm using my tweezers here to get the roots between the leaves and down into the substrate. I gave everything a good spray down and that more or less completes the scape. We're just about ready to add the isopods. I'm going to put the doors on first though. As you'd expect, I cut out pieces of glass and put them in the tracks. I blacked out the sides of the tank with window tint film as well. I'm also going to add some springtails so that we don't have any issues with mold. They will coexist perfectly with the isopods. For those, I decided to keep it simple and went with some powder blues. I use these in a lot of my bioactive setups, so I thought it made sense to go with them. That way this will serve as a breeding setup of sorts for other enclosures. There you have it, the dedicated isopod vivarium. I think it's a pretty neat looking piece which really brings this shelf together. That said, I had to move it back over to the table to film. It just wasn't translating well on the camera from that area. 
Anyway, the idea I was going for here was something dark and grungy which resembles a shaded area you'd see in the forest near a fallen tree. I was somewhat limited with the materials I had to work with, but I think it certainly has the spirit of that type of environment. What do you think? I won't go too much in detail, but I should at least briefly mention it. It's best practice to occasionally feature isopods, which is why I said the leaves are just supplementary. On today's menu is Rapashi Morningwood, which you may have already noticed. Like all of my other animals though, I feed a varied diet, from vegetable chunks to dehydrated fish and many other things in between. One thing I will say though is that you don't want to overdo it. Too much uneaten food will attract mites, which is not optimal. I don't want to get too into that though because this isn't a care guide. That could be an entire video on its own. Maybe we could do that another time. Powder blues are really easy to care for, so if you're new to isopods, I definitely recommend them as a first choice. As you know, I could go on and on about this stuff, but I have to get to work on some other things, so I'll end it there. I hope you all enjoyed the build and learned something new. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments, and if you liked the video, leave it with a thumbs up and subscribe to support content like this. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.